Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okey, hari ini kita akan masuk kepada topik terakhir iaitu Exeri Engineering Impact and Sustainable Development. Okey, kita tengok dulu learning outcome able to identify the principle of environmental impact assessment. Okey, kita dah ada mention dalam uh, last lecture uh, iaitu kita dalam topik ini kita akan tengok CIA and able to evaluate the importance of sustainable development sustainable development water resources and engineering waste water engineering okay these are the reference that we are use okay mari kita tengok dulu sustainable development what is sustainable development the use of renewable and non renewable resources in a manner that satisfy our current need but does not compromise the future variability of the resources according to the united nation sustainable development is a meet the needs of the present without sacrificing the ability of future generation to meet their own needs okay sustainable development ni adalah uh, kalau bahasa melayu dia kita panggil pembangunan mapan iaitu pembangunan yang uh, tidak akan merosakkan ataupun pembangunan yang mementingkan uh, persekitaran untuk masa hadapan triple bottom line solution must meet environmental, economic and social goes simultaneously to satisfy the triple bottom line so these are the triple bottom line environmental, economic and also social Neighbor sustainability. The first one is water, waste management, green space, community space, food, and walkable, urban life. Okay. Ini adalah elemen yang kita akan tengok dalam uh, kejiranan uh, kejiranan mapan. Pertama sekali, uh, mestilah mempunyai drill well ataupun duck well. Uh, rainwater harvesting through a system of system and catchment okay, ini adalah elemen yang kita akan guna pakai dalam uh, bekalan air yang mengekalkan sustainability uh, element kemudian dari segi waste management pula kita akan menekankan ataupun kita akan menicip beratkan recycling use of landfill to power sewage treatment plant and also composting so kita tahu uh, this method ataupun kaedah-kaedah ni adalah uh, yang bersesuaian untuk environmental uh, friendly okay. kemudian outdoor space outdoor space for example uh, community green space support workable urbanism okay which is pedestrian and bike friendly so kita kena pastikan dalam satu pembangunan tu dia uh, memberi ataupun um, uh, memberi kemudahan kepada pejalan kaki dan juga basikal dan juga selamat untuk kanak-kanak dari segi makanan pula farmers market backyard garden okay, uh, tanaman belakang rumah buying locally and sustainably grown uh, product and buying product in season so ni adalah elemen dalam uh, food which is yang menekankan sustainability kemudian home sustainability dari segi home pula kita akan tengok home design building materials and interior product ok kalau home design yang mementingkan sustainability for example this element lah kita ada green roof kita ada solar panel Facing north and south to catch southern breeze, and then three place on the east and west side of the house, which is mixture of native, uh, deciduous or an evergreen tree. Okay, ni adalah elemen-elemen yang menerapkan sustainability. Okay, ni contoh lain. Kemudian building material, bahan-bahan yang digunakan pakai dalam pembinaan. 
for example kita ada salvage wood ataupun ada local material menggunakan pakai local material uh, store light like green building source sustainable insulation uh, diperbuat daripada recycle fiberglass insulation ataupun insulation made from soil dan juga material lain yang kita boleh guna pakai adalah double pane window untuk interior produk pula kita ada energy star appliance Okay, sekarang ni ada banyak produk-produk um, elektrik yang akan memberi rating in term of star. So, kalau tengok ada setengah aircon, ada ada rating dia. Ada tiga, ada tiga bintang, ada lima bintang. Which is kalau lima bintang tu, dia energy safe dan dia environmental. Alright, seperti iPhone ada dah sekarang. Okay, kebanyakan produk elektrik ataupun produk elektronik sekarang, dia dah ada rating by energy star. Okey, kemudian kalau interior produk juga I propose hardwood floor and uh, cabinetry, low floor uh, floor kit and uh, toilet. Kemudian kita ada compact fluorescent light bulb. Yang ni pun uh, banyak semakin banyak digunakan. Okey, kemudian uh, jenis cat yang uh, tidak mengandungi volatile organic compound VOC. And then countertop made of recycled material, for example glass, aluminium and paper. Kemudian kita menggunakan pakai recycled carpet ataupun carpet made of nature fiber. Kemudian sustainable uh, sustainable form of energy. So ini adalah energy energy yang uh, sustainable. For example, iaitu tenaga yang kita boleh perbaharui. For example, uh, wind energy, solar energy, okay, solar energy pula ada ada passive and active, uh, hydro hydroelectric power, biomass energy and also geothermal energy. Okay, ini adalah satu kaedah yang uh, yang boleh digunakan dalam satu bangunan. Okay. Macam mana untuk kita menentukan bahawa kaedah ataupun method yang kita nak gunakan itu adalah sustainable. So, kita perlukan satu tool ataupun kita perlukan satu manual, guideline. Which is, kita akan menggunakan EIA Management Tool. Tapi dalam topik ini, kita akan memfokuskan kepada water resources and also environmental, uh, sorry, uh, wastewater engineering. Okay, apa itu IE? EIE is a DOE was formed as a result of section 34A EQE 1974. Okay, so EIE ni diperkenalkan ataupun di uh, dibuat oleh Department of Environmental Jabatan Alam Sekitar. Okay, to emphasize on control of pollution and taking remedial action. <coughs> so, fungsi utama dia untuk mengawal pollution dan juga untuk uh, mengambil tindakan jika ada sebarang uh, pelanggaran 1970s and 1980s agro based palm oil and rubber waste okey pada tahun 1970 80 uh, diperkenalkan dari segi agro based dan 1978 EIA was introduced for preventing control untuk langkah pencegahan kita memperkenalkan EIA pada tahun 1987. What is EIA? EIA is study to identify, predict, evaluate and communicate information about the impact of the environment of a proposed project and to detail out the mitigation measure prior to project approval and implementation. Okay, ini adalah tujuan kita adakan EIA. So, macam saya dah bagi tahu sebelum ni, kenapa kita perlu ada EIA? EIA adalah satu... Uh, langkah ataupun satu method yang kita perlu buat untuk uh, kita propose suatu projek so, sebelum kita propose suatu projek, kita kena identify dan then kita kena predict, evaluate sama ada projek kita itu akan memberi impak kepada environment ataupun tidak ok, so daripada situ baru kita boleh tentukan sama ada projek itu uh, bagus, uh, which is boleh dapat approval ataupun sebaliknya dan juga langkah-langkah yang perlu kita uh, laksanakan supaya 
kita prefer preserve kita punya environment ok ni saya dah explain tadi legal requirement in Malaysia in Malaysia EIA is required under section 34A EQA environmental quality act 1974 which specify a legal requirement in place respect of EIA for prescribed activities ok so apa prescribed activities tu nanti ada next slide the section further requires the project uh, permanent proponent of a prescribed activity to submit a report the EIA to the Director General of Environmental Quality before approval for the proposed activity is granted by the relevant approving authorities. Okay, so, untuk kita proposekan suatu projek, kita perlu melalui dulu proses EIA yang mana uh, perlu dapat kelulusan daripada DOE. So, EIA must, uh, report must be uh, accordance with the guideline issued by the DOE contain an assessment of in of the impact of prescribed activity on the environment and detail the proposed measure that shall uh, shall be instituted to prevent, reduce or control adverse impact of the environment. Which activity are subject to EIA? Okay. Uh, activity subject to EIA are prescribed under environmental quality uh, prescribed activity EIA 1987 dalam appendix kedua ok and EIA has be conducted by competent individual who are registered with the DOE under EIA consultant registration scheme ok so siapa yang boleh buat EIA ni so siapa yang boleh buat EIA ni adalah orang yang mendapat uh, pentauliahan daripada DOE di bawah EIA consultant registration scheme so perlu attend beberapa siri ataupun seminar and then sit for uh, assessment kemudian bila layak baru boleh dapat uh, certificate which is yang melayakkan seseorang itu untuk membuat EIA how to conduct EIA so perlu merujuk kepada a handbook environmental impact assessment guideline fourth edition and EIA guideline for safety activity published by DOE dalam appendix 3 ok, all prescribed activity need to be obtained EIA approval from the then, uh, Director General of DOE uh, prior to giving uh, approval by the relevant federal or state government authorities for the implementation of the project so so <coughs> Selagi kita tidak, tidak dapat mendapat kebenaran approval daripada uh, government ataupun government authority, so kita tak boleh proceed kita punya projek. Okay, these are the principal stages of EIA process. So, dia adalah satu proses cycle. Okay, so it can be bermula daripada pre uh, feasibility, kemudian pergi kepada next is feasibility, design and engineering, um, stage, okay, implementation, monitoring and evaluation, kemudian project concept, and this are going to be uh, satu cycle lah, okay, and then dia akan sentiasa ada penambahbaikan. At the onset during the project identification stage. The need to the need to conduct an EIA study is determined. At this stage, the project proponent has to confirm that the project concept is in line with any development plan, policies, and decision of the government of Malaysia prior to the EIA study. Okay, so any process to screening of the project option, pula. Kemudian proses yang ketiga, report will is review and uh, sim simultaneously with the pre feasibility and feasibility report respectively before a final decision on the project is made. Okay, so kita perlu ada sediakan report dan berdasarkan report tersebut, final decision will be made. Detailed design of mitigation uh, measures and preparation of uh, EMP which is Environmental Management Planning which refine the recommendation of mitigation and 
environmental monitoring audit in EIA into an effective environmental protection strategy that demonstrate compliance to the term of EIA approval. So, daripada uh, report tadi and then kita akan uh, propose uh, the others uh, plan ataupun uh, langkah-langkah yang perlu uh, dilakukan supaya memastikan kita punya environmental uh, sustainable dengan cara penyediaan environmental management planning. EMP. During project construction, the mitigation measures and EMP for construction must be implemented. So, daripada cadangan-cadangan yang telah dibuat, kena pastikan semasa construction itu berlangsung, okay, all this uh, planning kita perlu implement. Throughout the project operation, the environmental monitoring and auditing are carried out to ensure effectiveness of the mitigation measures. Okay, so sepanjang projek itu berlangsung atau projek berlaku, uh, audit and monitoring, uh, environmental monitoring akan berlaku ataupun akan continuously uh, berlang, uh, diadakan supaya memastikan bahawa uh, the effectiveness of the mitigation. Dalam pelaporan EIA, uh, there is three major steps. The first one, kita ada preliminary, kemudian kita ada detail, and then kita ada review. So, what are the EIA procedure? Uh, the EIA procedure adopted in Malaysia consists of three major steps. Okay, saya dah beritahu tadi, kita ada preliminary assessment of all prescribed activity, detailed assessment of those prescribed activity for which significant residual environmental impact have been predicted in the preliminary assessment and the third one is review of assessment report ok step pertama adalah preliminary assessment so, apa yang ada dalam preliminary assessment the objective of preliminary assessment for prescribed activity are to examine and select the best from the project option available to identify to identify and incorporate into the project plan appropriate Cybertermine and mitigation, mitigating measures to identify significant residual environmental impact. Okay, so untuk mengenal pasti apa yang terbaik atau apa yang terbaik, uh, option yang terbaik dalam satu projek tu uh, supaya untuk kita preserve kita punya uh, environment. Untuk minimalkan kita punya uh, impact to the environment yang uh, jika kita laksanakan satu projek. And then to identify the significant residue. So, apa akan jadi uh, kesan kepada environment then? A preliminary assessment should normally be initiated during the early stages of project planning. Okay, uh, so you all dah belajar dalam Construction management, kita ada uh, early stage which is project planning. So, dalam stage project planning tersebut, sepatutnya dah mula uh, kita initiate uh, preliminary assessment of EIA. Standard procedural steps are provided and assessment might be conducted in-house or by a consultant. Some form of public participation is mandatory. So, kita perlu buat survey. Okay. Public participation can be survey ataupun it can be kita buat uh, temu bual. Right? And then environmental data collection may be necessary and close license between the assessor and relevant environment related agency is encouraged. So, uh, kita uh, digalakkan untuk mendapatkan um, environmental data collection. Uh, for example, kalau kita punya projek tu berdekatan dengan sungai, uh, di, di, uh, kita perlu mendapatkan uh, water quality of the uh, river sebelum pelaksanaan projek ataupun dalam keadaan asal sungai tersebut. Kita dapatkan dulu uh, existing data. Berapa dia punya pH, berapa dia punya COG, berapa dia punya turbidity. Okay, supaya kita nak memastikan keadaan itu kekal apabila berlaku proses uh, apabila berlaku uh, projek itu berlangsung the result of preliminary assessment are reported from formally for examination and approval by the project approving authorities and 
that's a general of uh, environmental quality. Preliminary assessment requires resources that are small proportion of the main hours, money, skills and equipment committed to a pre feasibility study and the assessment should be completed within the time frame of that study. Okay, so mestilah uh, akan melibatkan uh, small portion of main hours, okay, uh, tenaga pekerja ataupun akan melibatkan uh, kewangan juga and also equipment dan dia akan dan dia perlu diselesaikan dalam tempoh time frame dan sebagainya kemudian kita akan ada detail assessment the objective of detail assessment for pre-scribe activity which potentially significant residual environmental impact include to describe the significant residual environmental impact predicted from the final project plan <coughs> To specify mitigation and abatement uh, measures in the final project plan and to identify the environmental cost and benefit of the project to the community. Alright, so ini adalah objektif untuk detail assessment. Which is kita akan pergi lebih detail kita punya uh, assess. Okay, so kita nak menengok, kita nak melihat sama ada uh, dia akan melibatkan uh, cost. Okay. Uh, and benefit to the project kepada uh, kepada community. <coughs> so ni sama juga jom perlulah ada uh, in house ataupun it, can, it must conducted by the consultant. Detail assessment should be continued during project planning until the project plan is finalized. Standard procedural uh, Steps are provided and specific terms of reference based on the result of pre preliminary assessment are issued for each project. Environmental data collection is almost certainly necessary. Okay, so kita masih perlu dapatkan environmental data collection. And then kita akan sediakan report dalam bentuk formula. And the last one is review. The objective of review for prescribed activities subjected to detailed assessment included to critically review the detailed assessment report to evaluate development and environmental cost and benefit of the final project plan so kita kena kenal pasti ataupun kita kena kita kena uh, nilai sama ada uh, projek tersebut benar-benar akan memberi uh, benefit kepada uh, ataupun memberi Uh, kesan uh, kewangan kepada environment and then to formulate recommendation and guideline to the project approving authorities relevant to the implementation of the project so uh, jika ada sebarang uh, cadangan ataupun jika ada sebarang uh, penambahbaikan yang dicadangkan jadi kita kena pastikan bahawa cadangan tersebut ataupun recommendation tersebut adalah bersesuaian ok dan mestilah bergan, ber, merujuk kepada guideline yang telah ditetapkan uh, supaya dapat diimplement oleh uh, company yang akan melaksanakan projek tersebut. Ok, so in review ni akan dibuat sendiri oleh DOE Ok, with the assessment uh, assistance from the relevant technical agency for preliminary assessment report by an ad hoc review panel for detailed assessment report. So, they akan appoint at the hot review panel. Recommendation arising out the review are transmitted to the relevant project approving authority for consideration in making a decision on the project. Okay, at the end of the review process, okay, and then they akan ada, uh, uh, come out dengan beberapa recommendation. Okay, untuk di uh, consider sebelum sebarang keputusan dibuat terhadap projek tersebut. Okey, ini adalah timeline uh, uh, yang kebiasaannya ataupun uh, yang ditetapkan oleh uh, EIE, sorry, yang telah ditetapkan oleh uh, DOE, which is preliminary EIE report. The timeline is 5 week and then detail EIE report 4 weeks and uh, sorry, sorry, term of reference uh, ataupun tour for preparation of Uh, detail EIA report is 4 weeks and then untuk pelaksanaan detail EIA report is 12 weeks. Okay. The DOE maintains a list of experts who may be called upon to sit as member of any review panel established 
the selection of an expert depends on the area of environmental impact to be reviewed. Okay, so ada uh, senarai DOE ada senarai senarai expert yang mereka ada yang boleh di appoint sebagai uh, review panel. <coughs> Dan panel-panel ni dia uh, dibahagikan mengikut uh, bidang expert mereka lah yang dan bersesuaian dengan uh, impact apa yang perlu direview. Okay, so ini adalah prescribed activity yang dinyatakan dalam EIA. <coughs> so there is nine category prescribed activity. Ada agriculture, ada airport, drainage and irrigation, land reclamation, fisheries, uh, forestry, housing, industry, infrastructure, port, mining, petroleum, power generation, quarries, railway, transportation, resort and recreational development, waste treatment disposal and water supply. Okay, so these are the prescribed activities. Change to help project initiator of all project approving authorities to make quick decision on whether a proposed object activity is subject to the act or otherwise three simple checklists have been prepared. So, untuk kita uh, memastikan ataupun untuk memudahkan uh, decision dibuat, uh, there is three simple checklists. The first one is activities defined by quantum, rujuk uh, table 2A, uh, defined by project size, were table 2B and not defined by unit of measure uh, table 2C ok, these are the example of uh, table 2C <coughs> which is kita tak boleh counter ataupun kita tak boleh measure activity tersebut dengan uh, unit alright, kita dah tamat untuk uh, topik terakhir uh, seterusnya nanti saya akan Uh, distribute untuk project kedua for your final assessment. Okay, thank you.